Welcome to Corporal's Corner. Today we're at the Pathfinder School in Scandinavia for the Pioneer Scout class. So stick around. Took the basic classes last week or last year, and you learned how to use the 10 So now, what we're going to do with this class is we're going to take that one step further. We're going to add some redundant items, but we're still going to stay within that mentality. We're going to drop a few items that are not necessary, and we're going to learn to use our gear a little bit better and more effective so that we can carry less stuff and get just as much value out of it. But we're also going to do it in traditional fashion. So we're going to do like a Hudson Bay canoe class where you would not be carrying backpacks and things like that. You would be carrying a portage pack, which is very much what Jim had over here, just a bedroll portage style pack, and all your gear would be in that. And so we're going to whittle down the gear list now. I'm going to tell you what you're allowed to carry, and you can just put what you're allowed to carry out front if you want to, because you can't take anything else, okay? Because you don't have anything to get material, but. Yeah. Okay. Sean, what about stuff like you got sailing gear for the night? Is that what So every morning you wouldn't have eyes on that. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe you want to tell them that it's not supposed to be used yeah. Yeah. I will. Two hours maximum. You've got to be back at base camp in two hours. All right? If that gives you any indication of how far you're going, that's okay. But it's not as far as you think it is. Two hours and 20 time, trust me. 20 time, okay? All right. John. 20 years later, I'm still doing this. Guess I messed up somewhere. Or not. stripped you guys down to the bare essentials. Only the things you really need out here. And now, man, you hike six clicks in just over an hour. That's awesome. So the lesson here, don't pack unnecessary stuff. Go light. 
And you don't need any side pockets and stuff like that, uh, do you? Right, you've been trying it out. It works, right? Yeah. You don't need that stuff. You don't need any of that stuff. You need essentials, you need to have it packed down, neat, nice package on your back, and then you got speed. Go speed light. is good. Go light, go fast. Light is always right. If you carry the 10C, so you know that you're actually going to... I normally, when I, when I use uh, screws for this, I take a, a dead standing tree and I already got my spindle up here somewhere. You can decide the thickness of it. The thicker it is down here, of course you have to use more uh, energy to get your coal, but you make more material, more uh, dust, and that makes a bigger ember in the end. But if you're not that strong, make a little bit thinner one. Try to find a, a straight piece for your spindle, otherwise it's good all wobbly. And it has to be a, a dark brown, not black, dark dark brown color. <coughs> it's black, you went too fast, you burnt the yeah, material. Yeah. You want you, this, this you're coat. building a fire. Yeah. You're just smothering it and you're just keeping oxygen out of it so it's it an ember and it doesn't burn. But you've got to have material in that notch. You really want to keep going until you don't have any more left and you just make sure you don't stop five seconds too early. That's with bush is when you put friction on it, it kind of hardens up okay. and get a bit slick. Yeah. So my, my choice would be would be birch. But that's my personal choice. There's a lot of you know this is an art this yeah. is an art for birch's got oil in it. Yeah yeah. It's got volatile oil in it, that bachelor, so it's gonna shine. Yeah. Yeah. And not eat away. And then it's not gonna eat and it's not gonna burn up like the spindle would. Cool. <clears throat> now when you blow into this, don't go like this. Because when the flames come, you won't have a beer. <laughs> you see that thick black smoke, dark, dark color smoke coming out of the back of the bundle now? That's kind of your signal. I can blow a little harder now if I want to. Um, that's now it's you flaming out of the back. Well done. And now you're just going to turn it over into the, yeah. just like we talked about in the basic class. Turn the bundle over and let the flame dry through the bundle. Alright? That's what you guys need to get to and then we'll put a community fire like we did at the basic class and that's where you guys will make your char. Now, out here, the primary go-to tinder source are these dead ferns. They can be processed from the coarse condition to medium and even fine materials. Look what you had. Nothing in the notch. That's what I was trying to tell you. Don't speed up yet. You didn't have anything in the notch to speed up too. Now here's your problem right here. Okay? What's the issue? See how deep your notch is in the hole? At least a quarter of the surface area of this notch is getting no contact with the spindle whatsoever. This was good. It was off center, but it was about the right depth. Once you start getting halfway into that hole, you don't have enough contact with the spindle to even think about filling that notch up with material deep enough to get anything to go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Oh. All right. There you go. Good job. Make char, man. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Got it. What's the what's the set?
don't burn that. So all we're looking at is a basic or standard lash and a V-notch right here. That's basically it to make this. It's very simple. So you can't see, come over here and look at it. I'll take it apart. So all we're gonna do here, I'm gonna cut three pieces of wood. That's it. Now let me back up real quick. Being where we're at, what I don't want to see, I don't want to see trees just cut off everywhere, okay? I made both of these out of one tree. So look for one, a good, you know, 15 foot high, roughly about this diameter, because that was the base of the tree. Cut it off as low as you can to the ground and try to get one tree for both these projects, okay? Thank you. All right, so. For the length on these, all you're, all you're gonna need is something roughly, for your horizontal bar, you wanna start off with the length of your blade, okay? These all have 20 inch blades, I believe, right? 20 inches. So you wanna make them longer, because it's easier to take the material off than cut it too short. You gotta run back around trying to find something else. So make sure that this horizontal piece, the same length as your saw blade. Now your two vertical pieces right here, so horizontal, vertical, okay? These ones here can be as long as you want. The smaller you make it, the more packable it's going to be or lighter it's going to be. So all you have to do is start off with three pieces the same length and just cut them shorter. You can cut this off right here if you wanted to and just bring everything down and make it really tiny. Again, because you guys are going to be carrying this along with this, along with your gear, along with your poles. So think ahead of what works for you and how light or how heavy you want this to be, okay? So then all we did, we had our verticals right here. All we do is taper our horizontals, pass it around. We carved our V notches right here. It's just like a V. So this will fit that, it marries up. Male end, female end, right? Okay, so all you're gonna do, decide where you want that, find a halfway point, carve your V notch, on the ends right here, this is your choice. You can go ahead and baton that down. However, depending on what type of wood you use, it may split all the way down. If the wood starts to split, you need to go ahead and put a lash on here. Okay? Or you take your saw blade and cut saw into it. If you saw it, it won't split, right? But it's a lot longer to do that. That's your choice. That's why I'm giving you the option of what you want to do. Between a Roy Croft pack frame and a ladder style pack frame is that the ladder style pack frame will allow you to carry heavier weight over a longer distance. Like today you guys did what, 5K or 6K? It'd probably be a lot more comfortable having a pack frame than trying to carry that stuff around with you. So this one right here can be this one, and this one can be this one right here. And just match them up like a log cabin. Or square notch. Everybody understand? Okay. Good. And you may have to give some fine tuning, meaning just look at it, make sure it fits perfectly in there, because you want it to fit, or it doesn't want it, it doesn't move on you. Okay. It wants it to stay in there. It does not move. Now, once we've done that, you have 12 of your log cabin or square notches, what you're going to do is do a diagonal lash. Now normally for something like this we do a square lash. But what tends to happen when you have a notch like this, when you wrap in between them, it pulls it apart. So we're going to go ahead and do a diagonal lash. collected two char the next time you have a fire, you're wrong. You need all that stuff because you never know when it's going to happen, when you're going to get it.
look at this guy go. Go, Joe. Cover your chart in, Joe. You got char burning up in there. Sweet. Easy money. Good job, Joe. Nice, quick, wow. Get her done. Bam. Bam. Oh, that was a good one, Luciano. Really, any map that you have, unless you know where you're at, doesn't really do you a shit and bit of good. And if you know where you're at, and you can't really get the map. So now we're going to go ahead and pack those frames. So just like your buck saws and the pack frames, this can be customized to your liking. The way I'm going to show you how to do it is the only way. Do it what works for you. But what you want to do is look at your pack frame. And some are going to be square, some are really long. You want to go and try to make your pack the same way as the frame. So mine's kind of like a rectangle, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first look at all my gear. And anything that can go on your body needs to go on your body. Your compass, your knives, things that you want access to, things you're going to need. Maybe even a water bottle, okay? Find some way to rig it up to where you can just get it and get that quick drink, okay? Because once you pack this up, the only way to get access to your gear is you completely unpack it, which would be a big pain. You just keep untying it, taking it back off, putting it back on there. So things that you don't need, like your blanket, you don't need extra warming layers or your tarp. I'm not going to need my water bottle, but <clears throat> my hammock, I won't need that. So all this stuff can go inside here. Next thing you want to do is you want to try and condense everything down as you want. But what I suggest is starting at the top, going around two or three times, we back up, go around it, then do a trucker's hitch, okay? That way we'll cinch it all down. But again, tie it how you want. You guys are the ones carrying this. Always keep track. You should always have It's still boiling down here, dude. What? A flag? A pole. Oh, right. You yes. got one pole that's about that tall. Yeah, I'm I'm in short supply of poles at the moment, so I'm looking at it rather than looking for it. Okay. Like post. I want you guys to use your bearings and your map and your landmarks, stopping points and so on to navigate this one. 
I'm not going to split you up in small groups and make you do it like group wise. It will be a full class transport. So help each other. Make sure that you actually get this done. If you get totally you know, lost, just stop. Because me, me and Sean will be just behind you, catching up everyone that falls out. The next part coming up is pretty cool. The students are divided into two-man teams, and then they're issued a canoe. It's their job to get that canoe into this water behind me, by any means necessary. Once they're over here, you can see those two by sixes that are floating in the water. The next stage is for them to carve their own paddles. Let's check it out. I gotta choose wisely. Which one would you take? Those are big enough for two times, right there. Huh? Those are big enough for three. But he's looking at it, and he's got the car paddle out, he's looking at the drain. They only need, you guys only need that one for two paddles. Yeah. These boards here will make three. Good use for the buck saws right there. Yeah, man.
Nice. That will be a mighty fine paddle. Very nice. No idea. Hey. Uh oh. It's a lightweight salt. Smaller sticks. The students behind me went ahead and cut their 2x6 into the length of a paddle. They're going to hop in their canoes, paddle down this channel to our second campsite. Once we arrive, they'll sit down and carve their 2x6 into a paddle. We're at the campsite for night number two, and this is where things start to compile on the students. We have three students that currently owe us a bow drill fire, haven't gotten it yet. In addition to that, we're moving into trapping, the students still have to carve their paddle, as well as set up their shelters. So you're going to have to boil water, all right? You have 30 minutes to have water on the boil. If you have not made a flint and steel fire, you've got to make a bow drill fire. Okay. If you've made flint and steel, you can make a flint and steel fire. Is it a... All fires get started over here by the pit. And once they get, once everything's in the pit, you guys can get water for them. Very nice. You know, you can use the same trigger configurations for any trap, no matter how big or how small. You just have to scale the components up and down, and the deadfall weight and things like that for the prey that you're trying to kill. So I always tell people, start small. Start with rat and mouse traps, and then work your way up from there. If you can mechanically make them work, you can catch anything. You just got to scale everything up. Easy enough. Um, that's what we do at school in, in, in the States as well. Um, before I show you guys these traps, you're going you're gonna to learn two traps tonight, and you're going to have to make these two traps, and they have to be functional traps. And that's a deliverable. Let's do it before tomorrow morning. Okay? But here's what I want you to think about for the rest of the night tonight, because it's getting late in the game. And you still got one more thing we're doing tonight that hasn't been announced yet. So we got some stuff to do, okay? The point is, right now, deliverables are starting to pile up now. Getting toward the end of the class, deliverables are piling up. You got paddles to make, you got palm maps if they're not done. You got bow drill fires that haven't been done yet. Now you're getting traps you got to do. 
You got a lot of stuff to do, and you got another thing coming. Yeah. Wrong side first. Uh oh. Keep trying. Yeah. It happens. Not now. It's just fine tuning. Yep. God, that fish stinks to high heaven. Oh, yeah. I hate some small fish. Do you want me to yeah. tune this in, or? I say you could, man. It might be easy, but I say you could. So here we are, the morning of day number three. Last night, most of the students were up to the wee morning hours, carving their paddles, and today they get a chance to test those paddles over a 5K canoe slash land navigation course that will take them island hopping across that lake system. Look up. It's good. Okay, it's good. Come on, Bear. Bear, come on, man. <coughs> All right, Corporal. Let's go. We're yeah. going to give a little bit of discussion about the map today. Is that my map? Yep. bearing, put it on your map, you have maps, north orient the map, and put the bearing on there. You will see landmarks. You will see where that line touches the shore, and that will give you maybe one, maybe two places to look. You should be able to draw right on your map. Yes. Put that compass on your map, trace that bearing line across. Then you should be able to look across there and pick a terrain feature and go. Here's the start point of the 5K canoe slash land nav course. 
Team Deadly right there. Luciano and Joe Price. They got a fine point seven and eight. And point number nine and their finish point is way over here. Land nav course is complete. We're heading out to day three camp. Livin baby, L I V I N. Look at that. Outstanding. Good job. Dave, it's 
sustainable fire? Yes. Freaking A, man. Give me a knuckle sandwich on that one. Good job, young man. Yeah. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, man. Nice, nice, Good. nice. Good. Good freaking job, man. Good job. Good freaking job. Good job. <laughs> Cheers, bro. Thank awesome. You. Where's Lucy? Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh. Take your time, Jim. Nice. Good job, Dominic. Thanks for that, sir. So here we are, the end of day number three. The water exercise is completed, the students are dried off, they've made their fires. Now let's head over to the opposite side of the island and watch them turn their canoes into a shelter. I put the, you know, and I'll do for right now, or something like that. Mind you, me and my friends, we went on a, it was supposed to be like a guy's holiday going on. Some people actually say there's no fish in this lake. Yeah. Yeah, right. And that's that. Time for them to pack up, hop in the canoes, and head home. Thanks for watching.
instructor life. Dig it. thing I want to tell you guys is we have started a new thing at the Pathfinder School of Scandinavia. It's kind of unique that we don't do it at Pathfinder School in the U.S. We wanted this to be a very unique experience for people. So what we did was John has gone and he's created a Pathfinder School of Scandinavia challenge for him. With Pathfinder School of Scandinavia and runes on the back side and the Viking compass that we use for our logo on the front. And we're going to give that point to one student every class. And so the instructors and I sat down and tried to look at the group as a whole and who we thought deserved the challenge point. It's a really tough decision when you've got everybody in the group is really close and deliverable. Everybody's done a great job. So we had to look at things like who has improved the most over time, who has contributed to the group, who has always been high-spirited in everything they do, who never got down on themselves or down on the class while they were doing things and they were wore out and tired and wet, things like that. So the three of the four of us have decided that this coin should go to Morton Anderson. Go on, Morton. Oh my gosh. Wow. Good job, brother. Thank you, Dave. Okay, man. Wow. Great job. Great job. But I love him. To my Irish brother, Joe Price. Yeah. Come on down, buddy. Yeah, it's <laughs> deadly, deadly. Team Dudley. Good job, man. Great job. All the way here from almost my hometown in America, Jim Moore. First UF student. I love it. Where's my photogenic buddy, Jimmy Anderson? Right on, there he is. There he is. All right, brother. Fantastic job this weekend, brother. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Good job. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. My very large Viking friend, Jonas. Yeah. Good job, Jonas. Thank you. Big great this week. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Ah. Ah. Good job. I see that you don't like it. Manhug. Mikkel. Jonas. The reception man of the original Pathfinder one. Sigma. <laughs> tape on the hand, little blisters to show yeah. for your efforts. Yeah. Yeah. From the UK, we won't hold it against you. Jack McCormick. <laughs> Congratulations, Jack. You did a good job this week. <laughs> My Italian brother, Luciano. Oh, oh, team Deadly. <laughs> team Deadly. <laughs> good job, man. Thanks. You did thanks, a good thanks. job. Still look like a movie star, right? Even after four days. Your wife will be proud. Dominique. You did a really good job this weekend. Yeah. You did a really, really good. Thank you, brother. Okay, guys, so. Grab your kit. Over to the other side. Up to the top. We got something waiting for you. Good job, guys. Great job.
<laughs> and last but not least, we have the Warriors breakfast. Check this out. Bam. <laughs> 